Okay, this is intended to be part two of a little beginner guide that I'm trying to make for the space shuttle Atlantis with regards to Orbiter 2010, the space flight simulator. I'm assuming that you watched the last video. If not, you should go back and watch it first because this is part two. In part one, we launched the shuttle all the way into space, very far up, using nothing but the 4 and the 6. This time we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to add two additional keystrokes. We're going to add the 8 and the 2. So let's do that. Same thing in order to get the shuttle off the ground. I'm going to press and hold the plus key, tap control in order to lock the engines. Once we're going, I'm going to press 6 to bring around the alignment, uh, to roll, use the correct terminology, to roll the shuttle, same way we did before. And that's the first priority, is to roll it to the same position that we had before. And once we have it there, we're just going to hold it for now. So nothing changes in this part. I will give you an advanced tip. Once you have it where you want, if you press 5, that will kill rotation. So that's one more additional keystroke you can get familiar with, is press 5 to kill rotation, and that will help keep the shuttle where you want. Once we get to about 15 kilometers, we're going to start pressing the number 2 to pitch over. That's far, that's far enough. So we're just going to press the number 2 a couple of times, and we're just going to let the shuttle pitch down a little bit. We're not in a hurry, so don't press it a bunch of times, just let it kind of fall down on its own. Continue pressing 4 and 6 to keep the roll position correct, but otherwise just let it kind of pitch down on its own. And again, we're not worried about getting into a proper orbit. That's for another advanced lesson. This is just to have a little bit of fun to get this thing off the ground without crashing. Take a peek at the external camera view, and hopefully we'll catch the solid rocket booster separation here in a moment. There they go. Try to adjust the camera angle without being obnoxious about it. Let me jump back in the flight deck real quick just to see what's going on. Four and six, that's it. Remember, we already pressed two a couple of times. And once the pitch gets down to 20, we're just going to stop it for there. Or stop it there, rather. I missed it a little bit there. Let me get a little lower. 20. That's good. Let's. That's good right there. Just hold that position and let it ride. Again, we're not worried about getting into a proper orbit in this video. That's just not important. You know, you got to do one thing at a time, and you can't have any fun if you can't even get the shuttle off the ground and out into space. So we don't want to put in too much information. Take a look at the external camera. See what's going on. And again, I'm going to run the clock forward or run acceleration forward to run this out of fuel just on this current trajectory. I'm not going to make any more changes at this point. Just four and six to keep it upright, and I'm going to keep that. Uh, Keep it locked 20. 
just to make every, just to make life easy. Because the more information you throw out, the more difficult it gets. So just hold it, 4 and 6, and keep it locked at 20. That's all you're going to do. And then when you got everything where you need it, press T to accelerate time a little bit. And just let that thing run until you got no gas left. 4 and 6 to keep yourself rolled correctly. And try to keep that locked at around 20. That's all you're going to do. We're not going to get into a proper orbit. We don't care. We'll do that later. Just keep it rolled to that position and keep your pitch at about 20. acceleration, make sure that you do not press any of the keys, because the everything that you do with time acceleration on is amplified. So when you're using time acceleration, don't press any keys. Come out of time acceleration before you try to fix anything. Almost out of fuel on the main engines. And again, let me try to catch that external tank separating. I'm trying to adjust the camera angle without being crazy with it. And there it goes, it'll break away. Or I should say, uh, jettison. And again, once the external tank is jettisoned, you have permission to press other keys. So, let's roll around using six. This just puts the shuttle into a heads up position. pitch over a little bit and look down. And basically that is the end of this lesson. The main thing I want you to take away is the vast difference in your orbit compared to the other video where we just went straight up. And when we went straight up, the only thing we could really do was to come straight back down. So if you look at this green circle over here on the right, that's this thing. This is our orbital path around the Earth. Whereas before, our orbital path went straight up and circled around a little bit and then went straight back down. This time, our orbital path goes much further out and then comes back down and crashes. So here's something to consider. Think of this green line as the way that you're falling. This is the path that you're going to fall. Right now we are falling up to this point and then we're going to turn around and we're going to fall back down to this point. And because of this gray circle is the Earth. Once we fall back down to this point, we crash and we die. So what would happen if we fell and we hit here? Well, we would still crash and die. What do you think would happen if we fell in this green circle, did this, where it fell just on the outer edge of that gray circle 
all the way back around to the point where we started. That would be called an orbit, and we would be perpetually falling around the Earth. And that is exactly what an orbit is. So that is for... That's an advanced idea for another lesson, but at this point, using nothing but 4 and 6 and a little bit of 2 to pitch over, that gets you started in getting a more proper orbit around the Earth. Have fun.